right. Hopefully no one has any Rotten Tomatoes. I was quite uh, happy to see that Etsu wasn't here uh, in person because I was afraid of his reaction to this presentation. But I think the idea that this was voted in shows that a lot of people are, are thinking that uh, we as a community need to take uh, a step back and maybe look at where we are and where we're going and what we're going to continue to do into the future. So that's what I'm trying to get a conversation started on this. This really uh, isn't a new issue. Uh, the first conference, uh, Roy Tennant actually talked about this in a session that he did, and there was a breakout session about it. So this isn't uh, a new issue, but I think, you know, we talked about it two years ago. We decided to pretty much go uh, in the same direction we were going at that time, and that might be where we want to continue for now. But I think it's important to take stock in where we are as a community every uh, couple years, and so I think this is a good time to talk about this. So the purpose of me up here is not to say this is what we have to do, this is what we should do, but really just get an idea of where we're going and what we want to do as a community. Maybe we want to change and become a little bit more formalized in some areas, and maybe we don't. Uh, so I'm going to really attempt to be uh, even-handed on this, but obviously I, you know, this is something I think is important. Otherwise, I wouldn't have submitted a proposal on being up here and talking in front of you about it. So Code for Lib, obviously the people here know that we have a mailing list, a website, a, a Planet Blog Aggregator, IRC, the conference, the journal, as we talked about. So we, we're doing a lot of different things. And actually, we're doing a lot of things. Uh, we're doing more things than maybe some more formal organizations are doing. And we're making it work uh, with this uh, non-structure that we have. Uh, so that's really interesting. So uh, David King went, you know, on the Internet Engineering Task Force when they were talking about how they were trying to govern uh, what they're doing is we direct King's presidents and vote and we believe in rough consensus in running code. I think that really does uh, go over to our community really good. I think it's really uh, kind of how we've been operating thus far. So I, you see that there's some parallels in what we're doing in our community uh, compared to what other communities have done that ended up going and at least having a little bit of formal structure. So uh, really the way we're doing, this is the same quote I had up uh, a little earlier, is really we're really great with ideas and come up with ideas. Sometimes the follow through takes a little bit of time to do it, but once you step up and do something, things get done. So we're working, right? We really are working. But we, we have some, some issues, I think. We have a little bit of uh, dirty laundry. Uh, we certainly do have uh, the tribal elders, so to speak. It's not a pure democracy in this community, and, and we have to admit that and look at that. Uh, Certainly a lot of times we do have this IRC click and I'm one of those people where we're like, oh, we need to make a decision. Let's decide it on IRC right now in two hours. Well, people from other time zones might not be on IRC at that time. People where their work doesn't allow them to get to IRC. People that actually want to do work. <laughs> so we have these type of, you know, we have these issues. So we're doing stuff last minute, haphazardly, and in some cases after the last minute. Uh, the Code for Lib website outage, uh, for example, uh, was one of those times where we really didn't have a plan, and it took a real long time, at least a lot longer than it really should have, to get something back up and running. So, you know, exactly what happens if something doesn't up and run. This slide, I really just wanted this slide of this, you know, lunar Mars rover thing from NASA, so I put it there. But really, the code for live <laughs> server outage, uh, we, you know, there was some time it took to, to step up. And part of the real problem here is, or the issue here, is uh, sometimes people don't want to step on people's toes if no one's really assigned responsibility. So it's like, well, that's someone else's job, or I don't want to do this because Ross is doing this, or I don't want to do this because Jonathan's doing it. But we find out that Jonathan really isn't doing it, and we thought Jonathan was, or, or we really thought something. So, so without having some sort of responsibility or, or a go-to person, things can fall through the holes. And, and we've seen this on certain things. Certainly, just the Code for Lib voted now. Vote for uh, your favorite place, uh, if you haven't yet, for next year's conference, but kind of the decision making on how to do this was really last minute, haphazardly, kind of done on IRC to last minute on the parameters of the 3210. That wasn't really designed by a whole community. It's 
you know, people step in and do stuff, but it ends up being those tribal elders, so to speak, sometimes that do it. So reasons to uh, organize or not. So some reasons to keep Code for Lib the way it is. Let's face it, it really, for all these little problems I'm bringing up, it isn't broken. It's really working. The reason why this conference filled up in, what, three days is because it's a great conference, it's a great community, and people want to be here, people want to be involved. So it's really, it's not broken, right? Uh, there are enough formal organizations, this is something I see when this topic comes up on IRC or mailing lists or just talking to people. I mean, there is organizations like LIDA or some other organizations that we have these formal organizations. We don't need another one. Uh, really, what role would we form if we were super more formal? And uh, one thing that I think is really important, and uh, Kevin Clark put this really well, is Code for Lib is an experiment, and its loose association is what makes people interested, which makes people involved and want to be there. So the way we're doing things right now really does have a lot of good positive points. But uh, there are some reasons to formalize as well. Uh, and, and you'll see I'll talk a little bit more what I mean by formalization a little. But there are certain things that are the bumpy road that we've had uh, to do and some things that kind of fall through the tracks. And, fall into the cracks. So uh, a little bit of responsibility will help, uh, I think, would help ensure, ensure that. So some sort of formal structure where people uh, really have assigned roles as a go-to person to do that. Uh, so there are some issues there. Uh, it would also help us maybe open up to more grant and sponsorship opportunities. Uh, obviously, Jeremy's done a great job attracting sponsors the way it is, but Really, if we want to try to apply for grants and stuff, if we're not a formal, organized structure, we can't do that uh, as easily to do that. Uh, obviously, for people in the promotion and tenure category, and maybe even not, uh, if it was more organized, it might be easier to get travel funding. I know that was really an issue for the first conference for me at my job, was to convince people that, what are you doing? There's a conference, and you're like, just a couple people decide to have a conference and go drink beer in Corvallis. Why should we fund that? <laughs> well, that was really hard to convince people to fund that. Uh, <laughs> and I managed to do it. Uh, and now that we have the journal and doing more organization and we're getting our name out there, it's getting a little easier. But certainly a more formal organization would, would have to do, would help with that. And also for people that are, are participating, say, that helps try to organize a conference and doing stuff like that, uh, it really the promotion and tenure committee would, would look at that and say, well, that's just you know some little thing over there. And they don't necessarily understand maybe the amount of work involved in, in how and how what you're doing is really sharing with the community a lot more, which is really the whole idea of uh, professional service. I think working with Code for Lib, probably you're able to share a lot more than maybe you can with some of those more formal organizations. But the Promotion and Tenure Committee don't really recognize that, at least not all of them will. So uh, the one thing to keep in mind, though, is some sort of formalized organization doesn't necessarily Necessarily mean this big, huge, top-down bureaucratic structure. That's not what I think anyone really wants here. There may be one person does, but uh, that's certainly not what I want. So uh, Michael put this great summary of issues up there, so I figured I'd throw some pictures of Michael up there. Uh, so he, he basically, this topic was talked about on uh, IRC and on the mailing list, and he came up with six different things. I just wanted to run through them really quick. And that for some people, uh, maybe for a lot of people, formality and committee are these bring up these negative connotations of some bureaucratic structure and the people, you know, locked in a room that can't come up with any decisions and hours and hours and hours of meetings where we talk about Professor X did something in 1962 and how this affects what happened at the Senate meeting. At least that's what you hear if you are at the College of New Jersey in a committee meeting. <laughs> uh, so, so there are that. Uh, but I think we have a general agreement that we wish to have some sort of continuality. I think, uh, you know, whether that's a formal structure or just a, a, a wiki that we have how we did things in a conference uh, so that the next year's conference, for example, can learn on what other people did that uh, maybe if you know, people that weren't involved with organizing that conference. I think uh, we, 
at least I was led into a false sense of how easy it was to put on a conference after 2006 because Jeremy just did such a fabulous, excellent job. And he's doing a fabulous, excellent job with this conference here again. But he's doing a lot of work behind the scenes. The Oregon State University Conference Services are doing a lot of work behind the scenes. And I think I thought, well, conference, you just have a conference and everyone shows up and it works. Well, it's not really necessarily the case. So there are some sort of agreement that we need to at least look into how we can pass this uh, organiz organizational knowledge on to uh, other people in the community. Uh, certainly participatory spirit is really important in for Code for Lib. It's, it's really a hallmark of Code for Lib and it's really a point that I think attracts a lot of people to uh, the conference and to the community. Uh, certainly Code for Lib is uh, highly decentralized and uh, to some extent uh, democratically self-managed. It's that's not quite maybe a democratic uh, process we go through but certainly we do try to get uh, people f from all different points of views in involved in working with us and do stuff and, and try to get people involved with the decision making I mean how many conferences go and ask people to vote where the next location should be based on a proposal this is the only one I know of the other ones I've been involved some magic steering committee decides uh, and you have no idea why they decided that or, or how or what uh, so I think that's really one of the, the strong points of Code for Lib, and I think there's some really good reasons to keep that down. So, but Code for Lib is neither this top down or bottom up. It is really more uh, kind of like uh, Eric uh, Raymond's Cathedral in the Bazaar. It really is kind of this bazaar-like infrastructure. But if you ever been to a bazaar, it's not actually everyone gets the same location, right? I mean, some person gets by the uh, entrance and gets a little bit be able to sell their stuff better because they got a better location right so that kind of works a little bit in our organization it's not really a true bazaar because certain not or at least not truly equal influence on people and one of the things I think uh, and I think I touched this a little bit on when I talked about the code for lib journal during that uh, presentation is you really need people to step up and we need to figure out how we can encourage more people to step up and to do certain things to move the community forward when we have some great ideas and move them up. So those are just a quick summary of the issues involved. So if we organize what are we organizing? Uh, the journal, for example, we do have a committee, so we do have some sort of structure there. Uh, it's a very loose committee structure. I mean, there's no like bylaws or anything like that. We have a mission statement. Okay, that's about all or how we're organized. Certainly, we work together and have some procedures that we've come up with. But there is at least a little bit of organization there, and we've seen that take the journal, I think, a far way in a really short amount of time. Uh, do we just organize the conference plan and do we have uh, you know put together a more formal conference committee and have those people you know take certain steps on there I know uh, Dan Chudnov has a breakout session scheduled for tomorrow or at least it was on a wiki I'm assuming he, he's not in his head yes he's still gonna do it so if you're interested in and maybe some ideas on what where the conference organization or organizing should be going for 2009 definitely attend that breakout session uh, so what are we organizing? Or are we organizing the whole uh, kit, bang, and caboodle? Is that what that is? Uh, the whole thing. <laughs> so what are our options? Again, like I said, I wanted to just break out some options and not necessarily go and uh, say this is how we must do it. Uh, no one would listen to me if that's what I said anyway. So uh, our options is keep everything going the way it is. As I said, for the most part, everything's working really well. So maybe that's what we want to do. Uh, one of the options that was presented in 2006 was to kind of join partners with some other organization. For example, I think the Res Carta Foundation was one of the organizations specifically mentioned in 2006 when I went back and listened to the audio uh, from that conference. Uh, I don't think that that's probably not a feasible option that most people would want to do, but I wanted to throw that out there. Or uh, formally organize uh, Code for Lib, and there's, again, different ways we can do that. You, you can do it uh, legally, so there's a tax status, getting incorporated and doing that, or you can just you know write up a few little bylaws and 
bypass the government types of regulations if you wanted to. Of course, that then leads you to some downsides as well. So some advantages of an informal organization where you're not really trying to go for some sort of legal status is no paperwork. Who here likes to fill out paperwork? Yeah, not too many people. Uh, it's also more flexible. You don't have to play by the rules, so to speak. I actually went through the process of organizing a, a 5013C nonprofit corporation in the state of New Jersey, and it was a real lot of work. And it's a lot of work every time we have to file taxes again. So it, it, it does, there is, it's not a ton, ton of work, but it's, it's work that has to get done. And if you don't get it done, the IRS has come knocking at your door. And we don't want that. So uh, those, there are some things in there that's an issue where you have to follow those rules. Uh, if you incorporate, depending on what state you incorporate, you have to follow those rules. And how do you figure out where you're incorporating? Because uh, you need to have a contact person where you're incorporating. So there's a lot of those type of issues. And obviously, it's easier to z dissolve or in, and change the rules, et cetera, with an informal organization. So uh, the advantages of, of a more legal organization, you get a tax exempt status. If we were a 5013C or some other ones, people could actually donate and that, you know, deduct, deduct that from their taxes. Uh, for the people that are involved in organizing the conference right now, uh, I'm assuming maybe OSU's insurance might co cover Jeremy if something happens and he gets sued for organizing this, but there are certainly issues when you're running an organization where uh, if something goes wrong and someone decides that they want to sue, uh, a, a formal organization would shield individuals from that. Uh, obviously, there's some sort of recognition and the ability to have assets, have a bank account carry over money, uh, get grants again, and stuff like that. So there are different types. Uh, you can be tax exempt without actually incorporating in some cases. Uh, or you can go through the whole, full thing to be a 501c3 or a recreational club, which is a 501c7, which is a lot easier to get, but you don't get the tax deductibility as you would have. So there are ways to make it a little bit easier, but you don't get as many benefits. Uh, but so it's kind of a thing uh, if you're going to organize you have to look at how many benefits do you want versus how much work do you want to do and how much restrictions do you want kind of like anything I guess so the question is where do we go from here we have about five years or so of code for live where are we really going from here and basically what I think we should do is really form a task force, you know, a small group of people, maybe eight people or so, to really study the options, look at it. So it's not just me up here saying we should do this. It's not, you know, one individual person, but someone, uh, a group to actually study the options, uh, come up with some sort of white paper with some recommendations on what we can do and why we should do it, not just what we can do. And, uh, and then have the community, as we voted on sessions here and the location for the conference, vote on it. and. Uh, decide whether or not we want to implement any of these recommendations or to not implement them and maybe look at this again in another few years and make sure we're still on the right track with this loose organization that we currently have. So uh, thank you. And if there's any uh, questions, answers, suggestions, comments. No. no. <laughs> well, if, if you're interested in being involved, uh, and with some sort of idea of this task force, definitely uh, contact me and we can see what we can come up with and uh, see where we go from here. So uh, thanks a lot.